ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of Larry Graham, and he wants to talk about only one in a million. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, let's have a discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody knows it better than I do that the system is crooked, the system is backwards, the system is broken. Individuals are going to jail and they're remaining in jail. And many of them have not committed a crime worthy of the sentence that they're receiving. And there are some who have not committed a crime at all. They have been, for lack of a better word, railroaded. People are asking, how do you get a person out of jail? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is not, it is not easy, but it is also not difficult. It is just a procedure. You have to follow a certain regimen. But before you can do that, you have to understand what's going on. Now, some of you think that you already know what's going on, and you're not the ones I'm talking to. So if you already think you know the answers to these questions, you can just go watch another video. Go watch about the little cats or about the little kids who are jumping ropes or jumping through hoops or jumping over buildings. Go watch all of that jump. You don't need to be here. Sorry. We're going to start getting into the serious talk, the serious things, the serious information. We're going to start talking about your discharging. Now, somebody, I just did a video talking about the taxes and talking about property tax. And an individual actually asked the question, how do I A for B my vehicle? Now, mind you, the video was talking about not registering a vehicle uh, through taxes. In other words, not paying the taxes when you register a vehicle with the DMV. So there was a mention of vehicles, but the, the person asked, how do I A for B my vehicle so i simply asked the person i don't know how do you a for v your vehicle i keep trying to tell these people that this site isn't for that i'm not here to answer your specific questions giving you your specific answers to your specific issues because that's not this site i'm talking to the majority the age of the majority because the needs of the many outweigh the needs of that one person. So if you want to know how to do things like he said, then you're going to have to go back and watch the other videos that are on the other channel that are predating all of this because that's what they talk about. As we mentioned, the system ain't changed. But a person who is in jail is in jail because he owes a debt to society. You guys all, you've all heard the phrase, you got to pay back your debt to society. They owe a debt to society. They have become a menace to society. They have damaged society. They have violated public policy. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have been around for a while, I told you how I personally know of a situation where an attorney paid a judge, paid the prosecutor, and paid himself and got somebody who was looking at at least 25 years, and that's before priors, with a dismissal with prejudice. Cost a person over $300,000. No, 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 I'm sorry. That one, see, I don't remember. I'm sorry, I really don't remember. I think it was 150, but I think it was, no, I think it was 300. This one was 350. That's why I'm thinking 150. This was 350. So 350 thousand dollars got this person's case completely gone away because everybody got paid. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was Larry Graham, but now you know who this is, don't you? This is the earth. This is the wind, and this is the bringing the fire. Okay, and I can admit it, as the rest of you have to admit it. That's exactly what they brought. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the conversation. Every person in jail is in jail because they haven't paid their bill. 
we're not going to go over all the details. Just look up true bill. An indictment is a true bill. When a grand jury issues an indictment, they're issuing a true bill. And the foreman of the grand jury is signing the bill. He is notarizing that bill. He's authorizing that bill to be produced to the court. Okay, well, that's why you are brought up on charges. They are charging your account. Oh, you don't have any proof that they're charging your account. The Social Security account is directly associated. That's what I just got finished proving. So anyway, that's why they get your Social Security number. Go ahead. Any, any of you who've ever been arrested, notice how they've always asked you for your Social Security number. What does your Social Security number have to do with anything? Why is your Social Security number even associated with an arrest? Because that's the account they are accessing. That's the account they are charging. Okay, they are charging that that legal fiction, that legal entity, that for lack of a better word, lacking better word, okay, the straw man. Wait, are you saying that the straw man really exists? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying they've said it. They've documented that the straw man exists. <laughs> this is in their legal dictionary, not mine. I don't have a legal dictionary. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen. The indictment is for the straw man. You are standing in a surety. That's why the name is in all caps. We're not, uh -uh, don't, don't start talking about no all caps name. That, that's, uh -uh, I just mentioned it. That's not the subject of this. Oh Lord. You must understand the entity before the court is a juristic person. And even if it wasn't, that's gonna be your presumption until they prove you wrong. You can even put that on paper that this is to pay for the insurance and the bond against this person, this legal fiction, this legal creature, this legal entity, this legal construct. It's known as a straw man, a juristic person, a legal person, a legal fiction, all meaning the same thing. All meaning the same thing, all right? Just so you know, because a lot of people don't understand it, and I'm trying to get past all of this because we need to move on. So I'm hoping you guys got it. If you didn't get it, don't email me about it. Don't try to explain this to me. These are things I can prove. I don't need you to explain it to me from how you understand it, because how you understand it is not important to me. So don't be texting me, emailing me, writing me because I ain't got time for it, you understand? And I'm not here to give you a better understanding through text messaging, email, or anything like that. So don't be doing it, people. Okay, I'm sorry, I gotta put that disclaimer out there because we, we got some really smart people out there and sometimes I have to speak directly to them because, you know, they, they grew up on the turnip truck and they never left it until they fell off. <laughs> fell off the wagon? Fell off the truck. Okay. So now that we know that there is a straw person, now that we know that there is a debt to be paid to society, oh, wait a minute, didn't the United States Treasury tell us that there is no money? Did they not say that there is legal tender, has no value in the form of Federal Reserve notes? That was the Treasury that said that, right? So if legal tender has no value, how can you pay off that debt? How do you pay off a debt when you don't have anything of value to pay with? Well, remember, there is something known as the Social Security Trust Fund. Each one of you have funds held in trust by the United States government through their various agencies, such as the Social Security Administration, the Treasury Department, and who's the other one that's holding the money? Most of it is under the Department of Agriculture and the Department of the Interior. Okay? Okay. And the Federal Reserve is also holding monies in trust. Okay, now, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm not here to prove that to you. You go do your research and you prove me wrong. But don't be sitting up here asking me the, where can I find this and where can I find that? That's for your research. See, everybody's expecting me to give them all of the answers. I, I'm not here to give you all of the answers. You're going to have to get some of those answers yourself. I'm pointing you in a direction. You got to take that direction. You got to make something out of it. And then if you accomplish something, then you can come back and say, well, this is what I accomplished. And then I will give you pieces. 
but I'm not going to give you the whole puzzle, the whole pie, the whole coot and kabottle because it don't work like that. So stop being leeches, people. Start doing your research and don't come at me with no penny on this stuff. You better come after me with a breakthrough. You better discover the theory of relativity all over again with a new twist and a new man. You better be able to explain what gravity really is. For those of you who under, don't understand this, the theory of relativity is a theory. The theory of gravity is a theory. It has never been proved. Gravity has never been proved to exist. It's just a scientific construct. If you don't understand that, if you want to argue about it, go argue with yourself. Because these are facts. These are not my coming up with something out of the top of my head. Every scientist, every real scientist understands that gravity has never been proved. Gravity does not exist except in a mathematical except for in a mathematical equation. There is no proof of gravity. It's just a concept. I know, I know, I know what you've been told, and I know what you read, and you were wrong, and they were wrong, and you shouldn't have paid attention to them. Okay? So let's move on. We have this, ent this entity, and he's now being brought before a tribunal. And this tribunal is known as a administrative tribunal. And this administrative tribunal takes this entity that they have constructed, and they say, hey, we got this entity, so we need somebody, because we need a controversy, so we need somebody to stand as surety for this entity, just in case we damage anybody. Because we're insured, but, you know, if we if we don't have anybody standing as surety, then our bonds are there standing as surety for this individual. And he's already admitted that we can do what we can do because he accepted the charges. We asked him, do you understand the charges? And he said he understood, so he accepted them charges. So now that he's under acceptance, and we did our acknowledgement by putting them in jail and signing the paperwork, so we have an acknowledgement and acceptance on the record. Now, there is a way for him to pay off this mortgage against his estate, because that's all it is, the mortgage. A person in jail has a mortgage on their estate. Okay? They're, they're doing the same mortgage-backed securities with prisoners, trading prisoners like chattel. Okay? Let's do that. Let's look that up. Hold on. This is uh, Patty LaBelle, y'all. And this is my girl. I, I loves me some Patty, y'all. I, I loves me some Patty. I, I ain't afraid to tell y'all I loves me some Patty. Okay. I took off my glasses, y'all, and I got to put them back on because it's getting to that time of day. I have a meeting in about an hour and a half, and I got to get prepared for that. So we're going to... T-R-A-D-I-N-G-P-R-I-S-O-N-E-R-S. -E like, there it is. Cattle. Chattel. Cattle. Chattel. Trading prisoners like chattel. When you get a chance, take a look at this article and read it. Okay? But uh, you see it says wariscrime.com. You're just reading the article. Don't read anything else on that site. Uh, unless they back it up and prove it. Okay, this trading prisoners, remember, you need to all pay attention to what's going on. There is an event, a tax event. Remember, there is an account being accessed. There is a charge being alleged. There is a debt being alleged. There is a tax event. Somebody is liable for the taxes and nobody is standing up for the liability. Ah, but then you come in there and you accept liability by saying you understand. That's your fault. I don't know what you understand, but apparently you understood it well enough to be sitting up there taking full blame. That's what you did. That's what the whole traffic system and everything. Even in my case where... They found me guilty of driving without a license without ever pulling me over. Without ever stopping me. Without ever documenting the time and date that I was supposedly driving without a license. Doesn't even document an incident where they spoke with me and verified that I did this. They just said it. It's a presumption. 
And under the law, you have to rebut their presumption. So the stupid attorney, I rebutted it with my international driver's permit under the Geneva Convention. Stupid attorney says, I don't have any appealable issues. What? You fools had three hearings without me being present, and I am pro se? I am sui juris, and you had three hearings without me being present, and you didn't have me present? When I brought it up, you didn't say anything about it? And you say, I don't have any appealable issues? You must be out of your mother... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, again, there is a debt. And because there's a debt, ladies and gentlemen, what the situation is, is you all are not paying your debts. Your relatives are not paying their debts. So, they keep them in jail. Why? Until they pay their debt. Well, I told you what I did. And I'm going to let you know what I did. This is what I did to get Francis out of that first case. If you guys want to know. I took and I sent one of the hour style money orders along with a cover letter to them and telling them exactly what the money order was for. Telling them exactly what to do with the money order to take it to the United States Treasury window. And gets their money. And here is my account. Here's my social security number and everything. Take it from my account. Don't take it from her account. That's right. I use my account, not hers. It's my account, people. And I wrote her money order for $2 million because I didn't know how much the official case was worth. And I wrote a letter to the presiding judge of the court, to the criminal presiding judge of the court, because it was a criminal charge that we're trying to come at her with. What? Because she went back into her house. So we're trying to get her for criminal trespassing. They, she went back into her house after they gave her a foreclosure notice. Okay? But we knew that the bank had no standing to foreclose, so technically she had every right to go back into her house. But nonetheless, they were coming after her. She asked me for my help. And they had already placed this at the time she was about 73 years old. They placed her in jail. She used to be a clerk court, a court clerk, people. She used to work for the system, and this is what they did to her. Okay, and the judge that was doing this to her wanted to make an example out of her. He ain't making an example out of nobody no more. Okay, he is officially no more sitting on a bench because I asked the idiot to leave me alone, and he did not. So with the help of my God, Jehovah, he was off the bench within two years. Because I told everybody I wasn't going to let that go. I, was, I even gave a promise to Francis that I was going to make sure he paid sitting up there yelling at me in court indirectly and then yelling at her and then putting her in jail acting like he had some power and I made a promise to her that I would take care of him with the help and aid of my God I didn't do it by myself my God helped out that's why that idiot within six months went from being the presiding judge of the court the presiding criminal judge of the court to being a juvenile court judge and then soon thereafter, in less than two years, he was no more on the bench. That was that idiot. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to tell you how we did that. Like I said, it was with my God's help. So I'm not going to tell you how we did that. I'm going to tell you what we did. We sent this $2 million, $2 million, no higher than that. There's no reason to make it for $100 billion. No reason to make it for $85 trillion. Keep it simple, people. Don't. I know some of you are going to want to make it for 5,000, 5 million, 5 trillion, 5 billion, and you're not going to listen. And when it doesn't work out for you and you mess it up for everybody else, that's on you, moron. You heard me say that. That's what I called you because you're hard headed and you don't know how to listen. And that's what a moron is. Somebody who doesn't know how to listen. Go and look up the definition. No, let's do that. Hold on. Uh-uh. Because I'm, I'm talking about morons. <laughs> oh, look at that. It just said it said your mama. So that a stupid person. We can't let this thoughtless or these thoughtless morons get away with mindless vandalisms every weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know how to listen. 
mindless, thoughtless. You don't know how to listen. Okay, what's worse than a moron? Let's find out what's less, what's uh, less, what's worthless than a moron. Uh, those with IQs between 51 and 70 are called morons. That's not true. That is not true. Today, the classification system is one category broader than a moron, an imbecile. Oh, you're an imbecile. Okay, or an idiot. Uh, there are a lot of idiots out there have been replaced with mild, moderate, severe, and profound retardation. <laughs> diagnostic factors of the IQs are considered in making a diagnosis. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know how to listen, you're a stupid person, a foolish person, a moron. So we did the money order. Oh, this is Angie Stone, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Angie Stone, Angie Stone, Angie Stone, more than a woman. Okay, Angie Stone. My, my, my baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the money orders were $2 million each. Why? Because it was a criminal matter, and they were looking to place her in jail. They had arrested her. So we figured if they're trading it, it's going to be at least $2 million by the time the whole case was over. So I sent an hour style money order to the presiding judge of the court, to the uh, judge of the case, the presiding judge of the matter, which was both the same judge. He was the presiding criminal judge, the presiding judge of the matter, and the presiding judge of the court. It's all the same judge. That's, that's who this was that was trying to get my attention. He was somebody who thought he had power. Hey, you guys know... Um, you guys know, um, come on, come on, y'all got, y'all know who this is? This is the ladies night group, cool, and the gang, and what are they singing? There you go. I love me. All right, by sending it to each one of these, uh, those two individuals in the court, we also sent it to the, uh, the attorney general for the state the Supreme Court of the state and the Attorney General for the United States. We're doing two things. We're making sure everybody knew what was going on in her case. So we gave a little synopsis of what took place. We didn't challenge any evidence. There was no need. We talked about the judge and we talked about the judge and his conduct. Remember he was, spit was coming out the idiot's mouth. He was yelling so loud. He was pretending to be a and I do say pretending because it's an act. They are actors. They are known as state actors. And that pissed me off because he was daring me to say something. And y'all know me. Go ahead and dare me to do something. I dare you. Anyway, uh, so we sent it to all five of these entities. We let them know that this judge was bringing disrepute upon the craft and the cloth. Hold on, let's do this. You guys may not know about this, but most judges are masons. An activity involving skill of making things by hand. No, we're not talking about a craftsman. We're talking about the craft. Uh-uh, hold on. Let's do this. Because this is their turn, not mine. Let's see. Yeah, I did the same thing. It still did craft and not the craft. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Ah. There it is right there. You see that? The craft of Mason. Okay. What the courts are doing and the judges are doing is they're performing and practicing their craft. And he was bringing disrepute upon the craft. But he was not just bringing disrepute upon the disrepute. You heard what I said. That's the exact word that I used. Then he was bringing disrepute upon the. No, I, I did that wrong. 
Yeah, that's right. Cloth. Okay. But we even the clergy or clerical profession, a man of the cloth. Well, judges are members of the cloth, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Masonic term. Okay, you see it deals with religion, the cloth. So he's bringing disrepute upon the craft and upon the cloth. And he might expose the secrets by exposing himself of the courts. And we can't have him exposing the secrets of the court, which is what I said. And then I went ahead and told them what to do with the hour star money order. And my word to Francis, because she was in jail and she was calling me and she was a little nervous and wondering if she was going to be in there for any length of time because her husband uh, needed her care. And she was 100% right. Her husband has been through a lot of trauma and had a lot of health issues. So he did need her by his side. And that's the most traumatic thing for her is she worries about her husband more so than anything else. And I feel for her. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Aaliyah and she's talking about how much she cares for me. Go ahead, Aaliyah. You tell her. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I told Francis, I said, don't worry about it. You got to give the paperwork some time to work. Ladies and gentlemen, it was only three days and they were wondering, well, how come it hasn't worked? And I'm, you got to give it time to work. Now, this was an exceptional situation because in less than five days, five days, she was being released from jail. Six months later, the charges were being dismissed. Now, mind you, she was only being charged with trespass. Those of you who are charged with murder, your family members are charged with murder, it's going to take a whole lot more effort. Okay? That means that you're going to have to do a whole lot more writing. That means you have to do a whole lot more motion filing. Okay? But what they don't want is their secrets being placed on the record. That's why they go out of their way to appoint attorneys for me without notifying me. Because they know that's exactly why I filed the appeal. Because I'm putting their stupid secrets on the record. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you're trying to get somebody out of jail, you have to keep hitting them in the head. You keep filing the documents. You keep revealing their secrets. But you, you're not with a blunt tool. You're not just throwing secrets out there. You're literally saying that you're doing this, you're doing this when your quote-unquote rules or your policy says this or that. And then your internal policy says this or this. You highlight that stupid prayer that they be saying. Okay, well, you know they make a song about everything. Hey, y'all. Aaliyah's saying if you want to call on her, this is what she's saying she's going to do. That's my girl, y'all. Aaliyah! The late, great Aaliyah. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, when you understand these simple things, and I've never looked up the craft or the cloth before. I just knew that they practice the craft and they are members of the cloth. Just like, learn it, uh, watch this, I just said learn it. No, oh, learn it. No, we're doing learn it. Okay, have you ever heard that term before? Learn it. Who? What the? What type of uh, language is that? Learn it. Of a person having much knowledge acquired by study, showing, requiring, or characterized by learning, scholarly, usually referred to as judges or attorney. They're referred to as being learn it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, not only are they refer to as being learned, notice what they're also considered. Stay 
Oh, I put two S's. Did I get that right, Ed? Oh, well. I guess I did it wrong. Wait a minute. Oh, because it don't want the AED. Definition of admission. An act of practice of admitting. They're admitted to the bar. So when they're admitted to the bar, they're said to be admission with an ED. It didn't like admission. No, nobody wants admission. No, we want admission. This is their word. Okay? Had me sitting up there making sure I spelled it right. Sitting up there giving me them a little error message. To give someone admission. No, admission. Admission meaning admission, word synonym. It is similar in words. Admission, blah, 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 blah. Urdu? Really? That's interesting that in Urdu, <laughs> admission exists. This is a legalese word, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so if you have friends, relatives, people who are in jail, that's why we do the contract. The contract lists all of their so-called secrets. All of the things that they're doing to put somebody in jail. All of the violations of somebody's rights that they're doing. That's what the incarceration and infant contract does. That's why there are 500 and some odd, well, 24 plus, 524 plus points of the things that they're doing that they don't want the public to know, that we're putting on the public record. But you want to know how to enforce one of those contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been trying to tell you, you have to get the summary judgment based on your administrative process. Okay, we'll be helping you with that as the days come. But this is the process whereby I have used to get six people out of jail and one of those is myself twice with the aid of my god jehovah gotta give him his credit because if i don't give him his credit nothing will work for me do you guys understand that's why everything works for me you don't hear me talking about no failures you hear me talking about my use of the hour style money orders you hear me talking about my and i still use the hour style money orders i just don't use them as much because i don't need to Okay, I don't have any, I promise you I don't have any debt. Go and ask. You won't find a single person that will be able to say that I'm indebted to them, that I owe them hundreds of billions of dollars. Wait, hold on. I do have friends that I have borrowed from in the past that I've yet to pay back. And my thing is when I pay them back, it'll be a whole lot more than what they've ever lent me. And I'm trying to get to that point, but I can't because I'm constantly trying to help other people like you all. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if this information is of any benefit, if any of the information I put out there is of benefit to you, I am looking to get some donations so I can get the structure for the property that I am moving on. It is 2.5 acres. I will be solidifying that in just a couple of minutes. It will become the property. And from there, I will be doing the videos and everything and TTOPP will be starting from that location. That's why this was so important that's what you've been investing to help and everybody every single one of you have donated i promise you as far as the organization you will be listed as a partner you'll only have you will not have any voting rights you just be listed as a partner so i can assign k1s to you so you can take the k1s being a partner you can take the k1s and you can roll it over, roll it over, roll it over on your taxes as long as you do the withholding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the withholdings. So everything you loaned me, the investment, will come back to you several fold and times over. That's what this has been about. Um, I just did a video showing you guys about the tax credits and the rollovers and the carry forwards and the write-offs. And the young lady has backed up everything I said. I had some idiots trying to make fun of me telling you guys about the tax credits and the benefits for assisting me. As if I don't keep my word, as if I'm not serious about this, as if I can't prove everything I'm doing. So I'm gonna tell you guys one last thing before we hang this up. The tax, one of our tax persons called us yesterday 
And she was like, well, tell me exactly what you're trying to do. And this is what I told her. I said, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take the write-offs that we had that are write-offs after six months of the debt not being paid, which after 30 months, I mean, 30 days, we could start counting up to six months. And so from that 30th day, since they received their bill and they had not paid, we can now start counting forward six months, but we only have to count five because we get to include the 30 days. It's six months since the last payment was received. And after those six months, that's it. It's a write-off. That write-off is an automatic tax credit. Automatic. Well, because it's an automatic tax credit, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to document that that tax credit allows me to take care of any taxes that are owed on my tax report. It allows me to take care of any of those taxes. However, if I do the withholdings from my tax credit, because it's because it's benefits, because it's used to pay down my taxes and any so-called um, liabilities, then that means it has value. If it has value, then I can use that value to pay off my liabilities. And if I can use it to pay off my liabilities, then why can't I take a certain percentage of those liabilities and give the IRS their piece of the pie? As I told the people yesterday, I make the ingredients. I put the ingredients together. I whip it all up and I make myself a cake. And I take it to the tax agent and I say, here, can you add some icing to it? Okay, the tax agent is not responsible for making the cake. That's my cake. I baked the cake. I put the ingredients together. I did everything. It was all me. And I just took it to the tax agent to add some icing to it because I wanted some more flavor to it. Okay. With that being said, that's all this is. So I said, the only thing I'm looking to do right now is I'm not trying to get rich. I'm not trying to get what's not mine. And I'm not trying to take from the government what's not theirs. I want to make sure that they get paid because they set up the system so that I could do this. So I'm going to make sure they understand I appreciate everything the government has done for me. And I'm not going to take advantage of them. It says, okay, well, what do you want me to do? What I'm trying to do is to make sure that when the paperwork is done, that it's documented so that I will get my refund. We've already, I said, I've already verified that I can do this. I've already had a tax agent explain to me, yes, you're doing it, but you need to do it this way in order for you to get a refund. Okay, fine. And I told her that's exactly what she says, but you know that I can just do the paperwork and I'm going to do it the exact way you tell me to do it. So that's my job. I'm not here to do it the way I want to do it. I'm here to do it the way you tell me to do it. I said, and that's all I'm asking. I said, when they want to, if they want to talk to somebody, I'll be here. They can talk to me. I don't have a problem talking to them. Ladies and gentlemen, she says, I got you. It says, no problem. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Just send me the paperwork. So you know what I did, ladies and gentlemen? I got TurboTax because TurboTax has all the forms, has, does all the calculations for you. Do the calculations. Don't be dishonest, people. You're going to do it under, let's do begin. Now, this is home and business. Now, this is, you're going to have to, this is a business one. So, we're going to make it with W-2s, okay? That's that's what that woman's talking about on the video. Okay, I ain't got no, uh, what you call it, no, uh-oh, uh we're going to do it e-file for free. Woo-wee! But this is if we do it online. I don't want to do it online. Okay. So this one will let me print for free. But eventually I will do it online. But right now I need the copy. Okay, I got 2011, 2018, 2019, 2017. I have all of those years for having to do it and go back. Okay. There ain't no, ain't no paperwork on my, what you call it. So stop it. All right, so that's what I did, ladies and gentlemen. And you see it does, W-2s, 1099, all of that. W-2s, 1099, analysis, and file. 
It will take care of your sole proprietorship stuff. So you don't need a CPA. Use TurboTax. That's what it's there for, for sole proprietors. Each one of you have a sole proprietor. Do your own taxes, do your own tax credit. Well, how do I do it? Go to YouTube and find out how to do it. Lord have mercy. Sitting up here wanting me to tell you everything. That's not my job. Just like the arbitration, everybody want me to show them how to get their arbitrations confirmed. I never volunteered, I never suggested I would do such a thing. Oh, you sound like you're upset. No, I'm not upset. Well, you sound like you're upset. I'm not upset, and I don't sound like I'm upset. But you know what I am? What are you? Huh? A stupid... Uh, your mama. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what I am is... Is I'm trying to figure out what's going on with people. The guy asking me about A for B in his car, how to do that. That's not my job to tell him how to do that. I've already told people, that's not what I'm going to do. That's not what I do. My job is to give you guys solutions to problems you have. You go out there and you purchase a car and you don't know what you're doing. You don't know that you're not purchasing it. That you should have signed the contract a certain way. And you should have sat up there and paid it off immediately. And then you should have voided out the contract within 72 hours. There are so many things that people should have done when they purchased the car. That don't come to me after you have made your mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, because those are your mistakes. Just like he says, how do I A for B my car? That's your car. You have to figure out how to do that. That's not my job. Your car ain't got nothing to do with me. Well, I gave you uh, I gave you $5 to your account when you needed money. I've already told you guys, just because you donate to this organization, especially because my intent is to give you back what you gave. You heard me. And triple the tax credits. You heard me. I don't accept charity. Nothing is free. That's why I had to figure out a way to do this without infringing upon any of you. It's not my job. But there are some people out there who will hold this over my head, and I'm not I'm not allowing that. I people have done that to me too many times. Angie Stone again, ladies and gentlemen. There are some people who will never let me live something down. And the fact that they gave me this or gave me that, they will remind me of it. I have somebody who's related to me who did that to me. And don't do nothing for me because you feel sorry for me. If you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, do it because you wanted to. Don't do it because you feel sorry for me. I don't need people feeling sorry for me. I, I got enough of feeling sorry for myself. I got enough of stressing for myself. I got enough of that. So y'all let me deal with that type of stuff. If you definitely want to help contribute to the starting of TTOPP because many of you guys have understood what TTOPP is all about so if you want to help contribute to that by all means you are more than welcome to help now look it's 307 I got a meeting in a minute so I got a meeting in the men's room and I'll be back real soon uh oh no I don't all right ladies and gentlemen if you want to contribute the button the link the buy now is right underneath the video those the rest of you who benefited from this information about prison and getting people out of prison hey i hope that it does help have a good day all of you have a good life have a good time have a good hey have a good night angie stone goodbye everyone.